Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the Editor-in-Chief over at the Serverside.com and I wanted to talk to you about the ins and outs of writing a git commit message. So there's seven standard rules in terms of writing a git commit message. The first is keep the subject, subject line to 50 characters. Um, don't get too verbose with the subject line. Uh, if you're having a hard time keeping it to 50 characters, it's probably a good indication that you don't actually know exactly what you were doing in that commit. So um, make sure you can keep it to 50 characters or less. You should be able to describe what you did in that amount of space. Capitalize only the first letter of the subject line. Don't go screaming the subject line. Keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. Uh, I'll talk about Angular in a moment. They actually buck this trend. Um, so you do see some organizations not going with capitalization on the first letter. But that is pretty much the standard. Don't put a period at the end of the subject line here. I actually have a, a nice little commit message here. Replace usages of this particular object with the built-in Gradle test. That's a, a nice little commit message there. Might get pushing over that 50 character limit just because the name of the object is referenced in there and it's a long one. Um, but otherwise, that's a good commit message. And you know what? Mentioning the object that you worked on on the git commit message or somewhere in the body isn't a bad idea either. Put a blank line between the subject line and the body. Um, you, some of these seem a little weird, but the fact is a lot of people that are working with Git are using it the command line and or using a VI editor and those won't have word wrapping and the like incorporated in them. Um, so we have to do some uh, intentional formatting, I guess you could say. Wrap the body itself at 72 characters. Again, this does not mean word wrapping. This means actually once you get to 72 characters, do a hard carriage return. Again, people that are, are using the command line VI, VI editors and other tools uh, will lose the, the body of the commit after 72 characters. So hard carriage returns at that point in time. And another one, use the imperative mood. Um, that means say, I say add instead of added. Um, say fix instead of fixing. And a good rule of thumb is somebody should be able to look at a git commit message and say, if applied, this commit will replace usages of randomized testing task with built-in Gradle task. So somebody should be able to say, if applied, this commit will, and then read the title of your git commit message, and it should all make grammatical sense in English. Of course, it fails a little bit in other languages. It's a bit of an ethnocentric rule. Um, but certainly for, for English style git commit messages, that is the, the philosophy. Um, some other things describe what and why, but not how. Um, if somebody wants to know how, they can go look into the code. But describing what was changed, maybe why it was changed, mentioning the component, or at least the area in the code that the component is so that people have an idea of what part of the code was being impacted, that is a good idea as well. So those are the seven basic rules. You know, uh, a number of organizations have their own flavor to those rules. AngularJS is a great example. Uh, they buck the trend of the uppercase letter, um, but they do say things like, uh, they do have rules and they say, you know what, when you do a commit, you should preface it with uh, chore, doc, style, feet, fix, refactor, or test. Um, and that way, when somebody goes in and looks at the history of git commit messages, and you can see that history of git commit messages right over here, they have an idea of exactly what's happening. Now, also notice that after they say the one of those names, they specify, you know, maybe a part of the code that was actually getting changed. So that way somebody knows what happened um, and what part of the code was impacted, at least at that high level that outlined in those seven terms there. Um, and then they actually describe the, 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 the change in the git commit message as well. Um, and that's really great too because somebody can go in and you know they can, they can, I don't know, grep through all of the different commits and um, maybe just factor out all of the things that have to do with style, documentations or 
you know, testing and just try and look at the commits that dealt with a feature being added or a fix being implemented. So that can really help going through uh, and sifting through that commit history when you're trying to look for that needle in the haystack as you're troubleshooting or trying to fix a problem. But anyways, that's it. Those are some of the best practices for writing Git commit messages. For more information on working with Git, working with GitHub and all the latest DevOps tools, head over to theserverside.com and check out some of the stuff that I'm writing.